uh-huh. So you wanna go hard? So you wanna be the greatest? Your life is a fantasy, and it's all for the taking. Cause this time is down, and I gotta get it. I'm a beast, I'm a freak when it comes to winning. Eyes on the prize, like it's all for you. Welcome to the show, everybody. Joseph Robert, the fantasy football counselor online here with Tim, the bald guy. What's going on, Tim? Not much. How's it going, buddy? Tim, we are talking about fantasy football bust candidates. We've got six names here. You really want to be cautious about drafting for 2020 fantasy football. Tim, I'm terrified of drafting any one of these guys we're going to mention here. How about you? What do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, that's the whole reason why we're doing this show. There's, We're going to give you the reasons why, guys. So you either agree with us or you don't. No problem. But we're we're cautioning you against these players. Before we get into this, Tim, you guys have to head on over. Guess where they got to head on over, Tim? To the fantasyfootballcounselor.com? The fantasyfootballcounselor.com to get the 16-round draft solution. This is the absolute game changer. We filter out guys like this because you're going to pay too much and you're going to get hurt. Now, last year, what ended up happening was everyone drafted Odell round one. Well, not people that were listening to us, but the mainstream can sheep as people that weren't aware of us. Ended up drafting Odell round one. He busted. They drafted Antonio Brown round two. He busted. They drafted Damian Williams round two. He busted. They drafted Le'Veon Bell in round one. So I'm really good at honing in on guys that could potentially bust. These guys, their ADP is pretty high, but they come with a lot of risk. So we're going to dive into this list, guys, but make sure you guys get the 16-round draft solution or click on the link here below, a pinned comment. I'm telling you guys, this is really going to help you guys crush your leagues. First ever and only video training. Going to help you crush it. Also, I appreciate it, guys. Smash the thumbs up. It means the absolute world to Tim. Every time you hit, seriously, you see how he's bald? Every time you hit the thumbs up, a hair grows on his, on his top <laughs> of his head. So if there's enough thumbs up, he could have a full head of hair. I want you guys to really smash it. Yeah, smash it. We need some hair there. And, of course, leave your questions below. I'll get to as many as possible. All right, Tim, let's go with these bust candidates. I've got three. You've got three. Let's just talk about them. So why don't you go with your first potential bust candidate? All right, this is one that maybe we don't talk about enough because, you know, we pick on certain guys, and there's a reason why we pick on them. But my first one is going to be Kenyon Drake. Um, You know, you and I talked about it off air a little bit. So while he had pretty good success overall in Arizona, He really only had three great games last year. And by great games, I mean 20 plus points. So for a running back, I want 15 to 20 every week if I can get it. You know, that's where that benchmark is for me. He had only three games over 20. One of them was almost 40. So yeah, that's great. But those three games accounted for almost half of his entire year's points. I just don't see it. He's he's too up and down. I'm not going to spend an early first. Uh, or sorry, a late first, early second on this guy. Yeah, it's way too early. Now, with risk comes upside. Trust me, this guy's a high ceiling guy. Potentially, I hear the Cardinals are going to run him uh, potentially three downs, but I don't trust anything the Cardinals say because going into the season last year, David Johnson was the prime guy. So just on sheer fact of I don't trust the Cardinals, that reason alone, they have no integrity for their starting running back. So that reason alone is the reason I'm going to stay away. But there's tons more reasons why I'm going to stay away. Like you said, only three good games, one of them being when they played San Fran in week nine, he had like 28 points. Then in week 15 and 16, three really good games. But other than that, he didn't have good season overall. And another reason, and keep these reasons keep adding up, gears to wow me and I'm not wild. I understand he was on Miami, but he did absolutely nothing in Miami. Listen to this, Tim. In 2016, 2017, and 2018, a combined nine rushing touchdowns in three years combined. So I know he's on Miami. It's a different situation. Now they've discovered the talent. I'm not sold, Tim. No. Kenny and Drake, again, just not sold. Three good games. Yeah. You know, I need a full season of production. If I'm investing a precious second round pick in a running back. Yeah, he's a DFS player to me. Although, you know, you got to look at all the angles, right? So last year when he had those great games, especially two of them were the last three weeks of the season. So some people are going to say, oh, dude, he really turned it on late in the year. Yeah. He was coming into his own. He's, he's going to be primed for this year. I don't buy it. No, I'm sorry. Yes, he did perform really well when he needed to. Um, one of those games, though, was against Cleveland, who was a horrible defense. So you can't really go by that. Seattle was a decent middle of the road kind of defense so you got to give him some props there all in all just a great dfs type player do not waste a late first early second on this guy you're crazy if you do 
very last, very important last thing. And there's a ton of points against him. Again, the ceiling is high. Trust me. And you could, you know, the good point against him is, yeah, it could be a three down back. But now this doesn't, isn't going to play a major factor off the beginning. It, on paper, it doesn't seem like it will. But they did draft, I believe, in the seventh rounder. So don't quote me. But I think it was later in the draft. I know the guy's name. I know all his information about him. But Eno Benjamin out of Arizona State, 5'9", 207, a running back. This guy has an amazing spin move, a nose for the end zone. Now, he did play around 12 games last year with Arizona State. 253 attempts, over 1,000 yards, 10 rushing touchdowns. And he catches the ball to him, 42 receptions for 347 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns. The year prior in 2018, 300 attempts, 1,600 yards, 16 touchdowns. Again, with the 35 receptions, he's got a ton of receptions, right? So the fact of the matter is they see something, you know, Benjamin, you know, he's a local guy. It could be a good thing here, Tim. And don't count him out. I mean, they could take a shine to him if he comes out, breaks out and Drake. Years to us, we weren't wowed goes back to the old Kenny and Drake. Eno Benjamin could emerge as a fantasy football sleeper. I'm not sold on Drake. Yeah, I think maybe if anything, you're talking like two years from now where you'll see this guy really step into it, but he's uh, he's going to be there. Know. He's going to no. take some away. You never know. I mean, look what happened with Philip Lindsay, undrafted free agent. Yep. Everybody thought Royce Freeman, including myself, I will take I will take uh, responsibility. I think I got Freeman in the fourth, third, or fourth round that year. He looked good in preseason. Out of nowhere, Philip Lindsay came out, local boy, local Denver boy. You know, and these guys come in hungry, man. Oh, you, I'm a seventh round pick, really? I'm. A, I'll show you I'm a seventh round pick, or I'm undrafted. I'll show you, and they get a chance, and they capitalize. So I'm not. I'm not sold on Drake. Just stay away. Too many question marks. Even if the ceiling's high, and he comes up and becomes a top five running back, which he could. The ceiling's high. I'm just going to say the question marks and the red flags outweigh the reward. Okay. I want something more safe and secure with my first, second round picks. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, again, we're diving into the stats here, guys. You know, I'm not holding back on this. I'm I'm giving you guys, we're giving you guys facts on why not to draft these guys. Uh, next guy here uh, is Aaron Jones, my guy here. Now he's going pretty much 19th overall in the second round, coming off as early as early second, mid second to late second, depending on how many people are in your league. I'm going to stay, I'm going to go ahead, Tim, and I'm going to stay away from Aaron Jones. And I'll tell you why. This guy, I mean, if you look at him statistically, like throughout throughout his years, hadn't really finished a season, had a good season in 2019. The years prior, Tim, only playing 12 games in those two seasons. So I'm a little concerned because prior to last year, which was probably, in my opinion, an anomaly year, he hadn't wowed us 12 games in 2017, 12 games in 2018, four rushing touchdowns in 2017, eight rushing touchdowns in 2018. And then this year, wow, look at this, man, 16 touchdowns. Way to go, boy. And then he had, what, 1,000 yards, 236 attempts. Okay, so he had a pinnacle year. It's not going to happen again. You know, and, and my boy uh, Aaron Rodgers, he's got a chip on his shoulder as well. So I don't know, man. Aaron Rodgers, I think this is the year he starts throwing more. Oh, you guys think you're doubting me? I'm going to throw more. Adams was hurt last year. They didn't, you know, he didn't throw to Adams as much. I think Adams played like 12 games. So they went to the to the ball more and they ran it more. And another thing, I'm really excited about this guy, and I think he's the future of the Packers running back uh situation there is AJ Dillon, absolute beast workhorse. They're gonna be used around the goal line. They drafted him for a reason. They drafted him to possibly replace Aaron Jones because Aaron Jones is coming up to a contract and they probably don't want to pay him because again, going back years to while, so we're out aside from the one year. So again, those are my reasons, Tim. Does this make sense? Absolutely. So before you even really hit on it, I was going to say, yeah, you got to look at Green Bay as a team last year, man. Just as a whole team, they were off. Something was not right last year. Aaron Rodgers wasn't the Aaron Rodgers he should be. There was a lot of things going on that just didn't make sense. I, I look at that as well. And I say, so it wasn't the normal Green Bay. It wasn't the normal Aaron Rodgers. Something's going to change. I think Jones is going to be the one that kind of loses because of it. Right. And listen, they're rebuilding. I mean, they drafted Jordan Love in the first round with the 26 pick. People are like, oh, my God, what are you doing? I mean, are they phasing Aaron Rodgers out? So is Aaron Rodgers going to want to try hard? I think maybe for his reputation. And an A.J. Dillon, second round pick out of Boston College. Like I said, this guy's a big boy. Don't underestimate him. What is he like? Six foot, 247 pounds, man. I mean, he's a monster. 318 yeah. attempts. Over 1,600 yards last year from Boston College, 14 rushing touchdowns. And you know what? He's not a big pass catching back, but 13 receptions for 195 yards in his, in his 2019 year. I mean, 
You never know, man. The ba- the fact that they drafted him in the second round tells me that I don't think he's going to be sitting on the bench. So big decline for Aaron Jones. This is what I call fool's gold. This is going to be the perfect example of like, hey, man, don't buy the reasons he buys. Just don't draft Aaron Jones. Way too many question marks. Stay away. Yeah, especially with the size you just talked about. Six foot, 240, 250 pounds, man. This guy is is what you would use at the goal line. You know, you're at first yard. You're pounding it in with this guy. There's right. no screwing around. Just give it to the train and let him run. Absolutely. I like him. I like the upside. He's a good talent, man. And I'm not going to underestimate him, especially the second round pick. All right, let's move on to your third pick. This is Tim's, and actually, it's mine too. But he's this so, is so this is me. always ours, no matter what. You know, we're beating a dead horse here, but we have to keep talking about Nick Chubb. Stay the hell away. Tell us why, Tim. Tell me. Tell me why. Oh, like, go back again? To Do I have tell to? Tell me why. There's this other player there named Kareem Hunt. Yeah. Like, come on. I mean, guys, look at the numbers. When Kareem Hunt came back, these guys were a committee. They were a 50-50. Kareem Hunt beat him, what was it, six out of the eight weeks, something like that? Yes, those other two weeks, I think um, Chubb really beat him, like beat him by 10-plus points. But even still, there is just way too much. This is a committee big time. There's not going to be enough here to justify taking this guy, what is it, mid-second? Yeah. You're nuts. You're nuts. Don't waste it on Chubb. He's going to have a decent year. He's going to put up some numbers. But do you want that kind of numbers as your second pick? I don't. Crazy enough, I see he's top 10 on the consensus that can sheep his rankings right now. I see him coming off sometimes late first. I know you're no. saying mid second. That's the average. But I've seen him come off in mock drafts late first. Honestly, this is kind of where he's kind of going, even early second. That is insane, Tim. It doesn't yeah. make sense. Mathematically, it doesn't make sense. No, it's it's way too risky, guys. I mean, he might give you that 200, 240-point year. Might. He might not. He might get in the 180 to 200, 220 type. If you're going to spend a second round on that or a late first even, nope, I'm not taking it. Give me a no. nice wide receiver instead. You know what's funny, too? Hooper you know, had some good years with the uh, Falcons, but he's now on the... Browns, right? Yeah. yeah. So they they got him top ten. They got him ninth. So assuming he's going to finish ninth, he's going to get a lot of targets. Then they got Odell like eleventh or twelfth, and they want to put. I know they're craving to put bring him up. And I know they do. But here's the thing: if you got Odell twelfth, Landry should be like six because he's the wide receiver one there based on last year's stats, right? It's crazy, and I don't go by last year's stats, but Landry is the clear cut wide receiver one. He has been for the past couple of years with Mayfield. So I'm not just doing it based on recency bias. I'm doing it because I think. Landry's actually the better receiver than Odell, especially if Odell draws the double coverage and Landry's the wide receiver one. That's great for Landry. Now you've got a wide receiver one who's actually better in talent, not getting the double coverage. Let let them buy the hype and and go to Odell. Landry elite. Then you got Hooper getting the ball. You got Kareem Hunt catching the ball in the backfield. They've got a ton of targets there, man. Like this is crazy to think Nick Chubb's going to repeat last year's numbers. It's absolutely insane. It's insane. Yeah, it, it, it is a super talented team. The names are there. The guys who can put up points are there. It's just there's too many there. As you long know, as Baker can bring it and put it all together as a team, no, I, I wouldn't trust most of these guys. Yeah, I don't trust them at all, man. I know they improved their O line. I know they've got a coach that likes to run the ball that he did the, the, the same he, the Stefanski that did in uh, Minnesota. I get it. I get it. But I'm still, it's still Kareem Hunt is there. You can't ignore Kareem Hunt. Yeah. You just can't. Too many mouths to feed. All right, this one I don't really talk about. You know, I didn't want to sound like a broken record, so I left Dalvin Cook out of this, even though, yeah, I'm not, st- I'm not touching Dalvin Cook at all. I left him out, everybody. Congratulations. I'm picking things up. <laughs> he all didn't right. make a bust list. Yeah, I know. That's amazing. Uh, but he is here. I'm just, he's here in pilot. <laughs> he's always in your mind. Yeah, yeah. All right, the next guy, we're going to throw in a wide receiver here. I think it's important that we do talk about wide receivers. Actually, I got two wide receivers on my bus list. This guy is Amari Cooper. Man, oh man. What's he going? 30th overall, 12th amongst wide receivers. So he's coming off, what, mid-third round? Yeah. Now, if you guys get the 16-round draft solution, head on over to the fantasyfootballcouncil.com. This is a solid plug. You'll thank me later. Trust me on this one. I'm not even touching Amari Cooper because he's coming off in the third round. That's when I'm picking up a guy like maybe David Johnson, Todd mm-hmm. Gurley, Leonard Fren- a workhorse running back there. So I'm avoiding him because I'm not going run- uh, wide receivers early. But listen, man, they they drafted C.D. Lamb, who is arguably one of the best wide receivers coming out of the draft. They've got Gallup, who technically could be the wide receiver one. The big question is here, Tim, is there going to be enough targets to feed Amari Cooper to make him wide receiver one viable and that's the big question mark right but mid third 
like you you kind of sold me as soon as you said the two names like David Johnson or Fournette. If I can pick up those two guys instead of Amari Cooper, I'm taking those two guys. The upside is huge. Right. Mid third though for an Amari Cooper who's a wide receiver one on a team that's, you know, that's not target rich, but they got some names, they got some guys that can do some stuff. I'd be fairly happy with him, but if I'm looking at who I can still pick up instead, no, I wouldn't be touching him. Now, if you are going wide receiver, which I recommend you don't, I actually did a mock draft going robust wide receiver. He is decent value in the third round based on what you could see out of last year. But listen to this, 119 targets. That's not enough. And that's without CeeDee Lamb being there, okay? Michael Gallup had 112. And Randall Cobb, who sucks, had 83. So if Randall Cobb, who sucks, had 83 targets, they bring in this stud young wide receiver rookie, arguably the best receiver next to Jerry Judy coming out of the draft versatile dynamic playmaker looked good in college how that's going to translate in the nfl still big question mark you got randall cop 83 targets let's say 100 targets go to you know cd lamb you know gallup takes a step up gets 120 targets again that's leaving amari cooper the 110 120 targets against not enough tim eight touchdowns last year over just under 1200 yards which is really good that way but again i just don't see this being viable as a, a true wide receiver one. And I think people are going to draft Amari thinking he's going to be a true wide receiver one. I don't see that happening. Yeah. To me, the whole argument once again is just who's still available at that position. Who could I take instead? And there is so much more upside instead. If I could pick up an Amari in maybe the late fourth, fifth, yeah, I'm all over it. And that's, you've always got to take that into consideration. What's available at the same time. What's the upside guys. If you're not looking at DJ, you're nuts. And I, I'm not I'm not like Joe. If you guys have watched our crap, I've never been kissing David Johnson's butt the whole time. But this year, I see it. I see the potential and the value. Maybe, yeah, the, the, the potential and the value for sure. If you're going fourth and you're going to take an RB one that's had his numbers before, yeah, he might have lost. Just we won't get into it either way. Amari in mid third with other guys still available. We're doing our dynasty draft probably in July. We're trying to put a dynasty team together and Tim is going to be in the league and he, I know he's looking to snipe David Johnson third. So if you see in our episode in July with Tim, we gets two black eyes here and he looks like a raccoon or what's the animal that has black eyes raccoon. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm trying to punch him out. That's the thing he's going to have. Well, actually, did you watch UFC yesterday? Um, I did not. And I haven't even heard anything about it. Felicia Spencer had her head like, what do they call those things? The hematoma? Are? Hematoma. Yeah, so I, my mind's not working. See, I, it looks like I got a hematoma. Big hematoma across the face here. So you, if you see Tim with a hematoma, come in. He stole David Johnson in my Look, look at this head, man. This is a rock. <laughs> head like a rock. <laughs> all right, Tim. You better not snipe David Johnson. I'm telling you right and, now. It all comes down to positioning in the draft, oh, we man. Gotta be, we got to look at sparking a possible trade then. There you go. All right, let's talk about the fifth potential fantasy football bust 2020 candidate tim let it roll i think i might have started swaying you on this one because you've yeah. been talking pretty highly about this guy it is mr clyde edwards hilaire i want to yes i'm yeah. on board i'm i'm gonna i'm not i'm not on the clyde edwards hilaire train. i'm getting off the train today after this discussion he is on a target rich team he's he's a rookie running back coming in yeah okay that's great but Look at who he's with, man. You got Travis Kelsey. You've got you've got a great quarterback that is very elusive and very unorthodox and can throw the ball in weird, strange ways. So he will create opportunities for his receivers. I just don't see Hilaire really benefiting from that. I think he'd be good to take in around the fourth round, but going late second, no, man. I got to have something a lot more reliable, more proven. I'm not going to waste a, an early pick on a rookie running back on a target-rich team. Here's the scary thing, Tim. Let's talk about this, okay? This is crazy because we looked at the numbers. Damian Williams, who's still there, had 111 attempts. He sucks. Now, he only played 11 games. Had he played the full 16 games, which, assuming he's healthy this year, should get at least, what? I would say 130 attempts, okay? Well, yeah, easily. I mean, if, if you're trying to do the math for last year, he would have actually been probably around 170 if he'd have played the full year. Maybe, okay. So then McCoy, who sucked, had 101 attempts on 13 games. And then you factor in Daryl Williams, Darwin Thompson, 41 for Daryl Williams, Darwin Thompson, 37. I don't think they're going to eat that much. So uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, for him to succeed, Damian Williams literally has to be on the bench the entire season because yeah. you're, you're going to lose 120 targets. If they, and again, 
How do you bet? I, I think Damian Williams is terrible, but he had a good Super Bowl, and there was a debate that he could be the MVP of that Super Bowl, and he got robbed. So, unless Damian Williams gets robbed again of his starting job, you know, Clyde Edwards Alaire, you know, temper your expectations because Daryl Damian Williams will eat some. It, you know, it sucks. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm just saying it's too target rich of a team, rookie running back coming in, competing against other guys. It it could potentially happen. Right now, at this point of the year where we don't know how things are going, OTAs, training camp. No, nope, no, way too high of a price. Way too high. Okay, another thing you want to note, Damian Williams and LaShawn McCoy had 71 targets combined. Okay. That is two running backs. Okay. So I and a lot of people are drafting Clyde Edwards Lair to be that PPR guy. So if Damian Williams is still there and he had 37 targets last year, is Clyde Edwards are going to get this 70, 80 targets that we're anticipating, like a Camara type finish, right? If you're drafting him in the second round, you want to finish a Camara with the 81 receptions type thing. They only threw 71 targets to those two running backs. Now, there was a couple of Daryl Williams, Darwin Thompson, peanuts here and there, 15 and nine, right? In regards to receptions for Williams and Thompson, right? 19 and 10 for targets. So 29 targets between those two other guys. So I don't, I don't know, man. It doesn't seem mathematically that there's enough attempts and targets to running backs here to make him. A solid RB1, RB2. It's it's scary. Right. And he's proven in college that he's got the hands. He can be a PPR machine, but he's a PPR machine on a team with a lot of other great receivers. No, not right yeah. now, guys. I got some question marks here. So it makes sense, man. I could definitely see it. I may get off the Clyde Edwards. After looking at the numbers that deeply, like I'm basically saying second round, part of a robust RB strategy with the ceiling, assuming that Williams gets completely benched. That's, you know what I'm saying? Or really like an 80, 20 split. Yeah. There's just too much risk to, to put such a high price on this guy right now. Okay. So be cautious. I mean, it's total boomer bust again, like Drake with high ceiling comes a lot of risk, right? You know, yeah. risk reward. Is it worth it to suck around? If, if you do go Clyde Edwards, which I recommend in 16 rounds, if you are considering them. You are going robust RB. So you've got your, let's say Saquon, Clyde Edwards Lair, then you get yourself someone solid like a Leonard Fournette, a David Johnson after that. So you got four running backs. And I'm comfortable going four running backs in the first four rounds. I'm telling you right now, I love it. Yeah, see, and I'm the other way. I, in fact, so I did that mock that we ripped apart in one of our last shows where I went with um, Michael Thomas as my third overall pick. So I, I was happy with that, and I was happy still getting Fournette and David Johnson in the third and fourth, man. Give me that instead for sure. Okay, last one here, Tim. Let's talk about it. Houston and uh, DeAndre Hopkins last year did okay. Now he's on. Um, he's he's on. The, he was on the Texans last year, and DeAndre Hopkins now new team with the Arizona Cardinals. I don't trust DeAndre Hopkins with Kyler Murray. I'm just looking at stats, guys. I'm just. I'm looking at the numbers here. That's why I'm kind of like thrown off. Yeah, you're I'm looking at the targets for all their wide receivers yeah, and everything. I'm, sorry, I'm processing all this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unleash here my reason here because I know a lot of people are rolling their eyes. 150 targets last year, okay? That is a lot of targets. That's a wide receiver one. That's pretty good, right? We had guys like Michael Thomas have 185 targets. That's what you need to be finished top five. Right now, Hopkins sitting top five, okay, amongst wide receivers. Are you going to consider him? He's 12th overall. But here's the numbers that I'm looking at that I'm trying to add up in my mind that literally, uh, Tim, they don't make sense here with Arizona. Like it, it, mathematically, it doesn't make sense that Hopkins is going to be the guy in Arizona because last year, their number one receiver, Larry Fitzgerald, had 109 targets. That's their number one guy. Yeah. And guess what, Tim? He's still there. Then Kirk, 107 targets. He's still there. Then you got to pepper in Keyshawn Johnson for 42 targets. There's other guys get, but 109 targets was their pinnacle guy who's still there. But then they're like, Joe, they're phasing Larry Fitzgerald out. I understand they're phasing him out, but are they going to phase him enough to have him sit on the bench so that Hopkins can get the 109 targets? Because Christian Kirk's still there. He's going to demand some targets, right? And they line up four wide potentially, right? They want to line up four wide. And not to mention, Tim, and this is where I'm going back here with stats, the running backs catch balls as well. So yeah. 68 targets last year to Drake, 47 to David Johnson. So you're going to have Drake catch at least, you know, have 100 targets for like, what, 60 receptions if he's going to play three down workhorse running back. So, Tim, mathematically, does this make sense? Yeah, of course. You've just nailed it, man. And that's the way I always look at things. I always look at numbers. Yes, you got to look at the situation too. Who's there? Who's doing what? 
DeAndre's going to be the number one on that team, but he's still not going to outpace Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk by that huge amount that you need or that you want to see. Those guys are still going to get 100 targets each for sure. So how is DeAndre going to get that 150, 170 targets? I, I don't see it happening either. It's just unless he completely, Kyler completely gravitates to Hopkins and they, every almost every play. Like another thing, that's what I want to talk about is the rapport, especially with what's happened in the world situation. Are these guys on the field training as much as they could be? Right? Maybe they are, maybe they're not. But that's besides the fact he's had years with Deshaun Watson with that rapport, right? And a lot of people say, well, Joe, he's performed with crappy quarterbacks as well when Watson got hurt. Yes, I know. So that, that can kind of combat that debate, that that rapport with Kyler could be good. But Ky Kyler likes to, he's not a really a, a, as much of a pocket pa passer. He'll scramble. He'll run on some plays as well. So there's a lot of targets to go around here, Tim. 150 targets to make him a top five receiver again. New team, new quarterback, new situation, possibly lining up four wide with Larry Fitzgerald, who's been the wide receiver on that team, wide receiver one on that team for years, I don't see it. I just don't see it. He is a bust candidate for me with absolute ease. Make sense? Yeah, man. Just based on his ADP, where he's going, of course that makes sense. All right, man. There you have it, guys. Our six potential bust candidates and the reasoning why to stay away. Tim, anything else you want to add on these guys? No. No. <laughs> we're, we're always looking we're giving you every reason we can we're just warning you guys obviously you've got to you got to play your draft because you never know i mean when you're playing with guys who really know guys who have different ideals of how they want to approach the draft you don't know what's available but you know we're we're warning you from what we see with their adp where these guys are going what the potential downfalls are it's a caution you still have to play your draft because drafts can vary so wildly so Look at who's available. Look at what's up there. Can you add a wide receiver instead of a running back at a certain position? You've always got to play it, guys. Just we're trying to warn you on what we're seeing. All right, Tim. Thank you for coming on, man. And uh, we're going to get back to our Mondays and Thursdays show, as you can see here. And, Tim, I'm, I'm super excited about the season, man. I can't express it enough. And if you guys want to dominate your season, head on over to thefantasyfootballcouncil.com. Get that 16-round draft solution. You guys can see we're laying out the facts. We do the digging for you. Everything is laid out. All the optimal players handed to you on a silver platter. In fact, you can get 16 rounds and never listen to us again. And you're set for the year. <laughs> but you should. You should. Yeah, and You should watch us because we're absolutely gorgeous. So if all you ever do is listen oh, to audio, goodness. oh, my God, you got to get on YouTube. Well, maybe, we are sexy. Maybe if you leave a thumbs up and that hair grows out, we, you know, <laughs> yeah. we can that profile. But we yeah, need like six million thumbs up. We're a couple of sixes, Tim. Let's be honest. And we're giving ourselves credit. <laughs> <laughs> we have great teeth and stuff. We're not that bad. Yeah. I mean, I got the bright blue eyes. I'm, um, I'm gorgeous. My, my caterpillar eyebrows. All right. Yeah. This is getting out of hand. All right. Yeah. Let's go. All right, guys. We're out. Smash the thumbs up and uh, grow a hair for Tim on his bald head. Please. And stay I, away from I need these it. guys. Stay it's away. been a long time. All right. We'll talk soon. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.